What happens when you bring 5G, AI and big data together? But more importantly, what role do these technologies play in creating a smart city? Well, let's find out more. Facial recognition technology, what powers it? There is no steering wheel in this car because uh, we've reached the level four autonomous driving level. So one of the things that these technologies bring to us is convenience. This is our APP's biggest attribute. It is to protect our customers' data. Ah, okay. Customers' data. Ah, okay. Customers' data. Living smart or smart living, whatever you want to call it, one thing is clear. The tech stuff gives us solutions. Solutions to our problems, perhaps. But how far is tech willing to go? Guiyang City in southern Guizhou province could help me understand more. After all, Guiyang City is the first in China to widely deploy facial recognition services on its public transportation. So I heard so much about facial recognition technology. So I want to ask you about what powers it and how is it created. 最主要的是我们的呃刷脸技术应用以及大数据库的技术应用以及支付系统的应用。五 G 的话，就说是它主要是完成一个数据的传输。呃，大数据库技术呢，它是需要就是。提供一个城市级的脸部数据库，然后我们的 AI 技术呢，要主要实现人的脸部的获取。This is my first time to come to Guiyang City. So, why Guiyang is the city to deploy, you know, big data, AI, and 5G? Guiyang 呢是作为一个大数据应用的一个前沿城市，就是说，呃，每年的话会举行一个就数据博览会，就希望来把大数据这个技术呢更充分的发挥，就。So this is the uh, facial recognition technology machine that I used in subways, but it is with a difference because it doesn't give you a paper ticket, but rather it takes a facial record of your face. All right, so this is the moment of truth. Let's see. Oh, I managed to get through now. All right, so that means I can get on the subway using facial recognition technology. So that means I get to go to my next spot. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So one of the things that these technologies bring to us is convenience, making it a lot easier from day to day. And one of the things I need help with is finding car parking spaces in cities that is congested, that has too many cars. And there is an app in Guiyang helps you to do just that. Chen Bo is the COO for Guizhou Chumi Technology. That's behind the app with six million subscribers nation, and more than half of that in Guizhou Province. So also, I'm really interested in the app. You know, how does it work, and how can you find the space? And when you open the app, it will recommend you to the nearest ten kilometers away parking lot. It is divided into public parking lots and private parking lots. This is our app's biggest attribute. It allows us to connect with our personal car and get the car to the person. How were you able to set this app up? And you know, what is it powered by? Our app is mainly used for data collection and calculation. Data collection is used for data analysis. Calculation is used for calculating the rate. This is my first time meeting actually, an app that allows you to find a private parking space. I think it's really convenient. Maybe let's go see it. With a million subscribers in Guiyang City alone, there is no shortage of demand for parking spaces. This parking lot is called Shijiqing Street. It is about 20 people. There are 3 million cars in the street. It is about 3 million cars in the street. It is about 3 million cars in the street. It is about 3 million cars in the street. 闲时车位把它共享，通过平台共享出来，那么这样的话可以赚取一部分的收益
it seems that people are sharing it, and it kind of mm. gives me it gives me the impression that this is sharing economy. But how is this being used in other communities in Guangyang City or any other cities in China? Guizhou Cent, 的话基本上是覆盖了的。那么在全国的话，大概有覆盖十多个城市。This app will definitely be popular, I think, in China in the coming months and coming years, and I will definitely use it myself to help me find a parking space and not get a ticket. Far beyond just scrambling to find a parking space, maybe don't even have to drive in the first place. That's the idea from Hankai Su Intelligent Technology, or PICS, in Guiyang. Their vision is to rebuild the city with autonomous driving, and it's coming much sooner than you think. Why is it called moving space? And that's quite interesting. Because we provide people、um, a space to live,、uh -huh. to、uh, have fun,、uh -huh. or to work. Okay, so that's really interesting. I can't wait to see the car. Let's go. For Pigs, their city rebuild is not just about putting driverless cars on roads for transport, but it's using it to mobilize services, putting meals and drinks on wheels, so that you can access it anytime, anywhere. You will see taco trucks, coffee vending machines, or even photo booths floating around the city, going after consumers. And it's also good for businesses. They will be able to reach larger audiences than they would with their brick-and-mortar stores. Pix calls this the world's first autonomous mobility service platform. Okay, so here we are. Oh, okay, that's the car. It's much、yeah. uh, bigger than what I expected. Right. right. It is actually like for living, I guess, isn't it? Right. You can actually just put a van. Yeah, you can. Thank you. As you can see, there's no steering wheel in this car, and with 5G technology, it gives the autonomous driving system a faster feedback. It makes it more safer. We've deployed into、uh, some supermarkets or malls or、so、some parks. I'm really excited to see if these can go on the roads, and then if I'm finished work, I want to go back home. I can、right. sit in one of these cars and do my work at the same time, or、right. have my dinner. Right. <laughs> Just think about it. So, how do you define a smart city? Is it about the aesthetics of having everything digitalized and all the glamour that comes with it, or is it about making something complicated just simpler? Guoyang's idea of smart is about creating accessibility to technology that creates efficiency in how we go about our day, and with that comes convenience. And because convenience is like a religion in China. This is what can push people to adopt these technologies. I'm Guizhou. Stay tuned with China Matters.